On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, well, Kevin Durant, what else can we say? Well, we can say a lot during this episode. The pros and the cons of the 76ers trying to acquire the future Hall of Famer. We'll do it next right here at Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 76ers. I'm your host, Devon Givens, from 97 Father Fanatic in Philadelphia. That's radio, folks. And I'm alongside my co-host and partner, Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Sixers beat writer. He does a great job, as always. I always have fun here on the podcast. But Keith, what's going on, man? What's popping, D? How you been, bro? Uh, man, I'm doing good, man. It's the summer, still enjoying the week off, and uh, just having a nice time, man. So hope you are as well. As you have some time off from your day job and your night job and your nonstop job. Uh, thanks to everybody, though, for making Locked On 76 is your first listen every day. And as a reminder, we want to let you know that Locked On 76 is, is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube. Keith, well, it's back. Kevin Durant. Uh, it is now being said that he has interest in both Boston and Philadelphia. And that is where we begin today, where we have to start with um, the Philadelphia 76ers pros of putting together a deal and acquiring the future Hall of Famer. I have a lot to say about it. Uh, if people have heard me in the past about Kevin Durant, just putting it out there, my favorite player in the league, not number 25. Well, not wearing number 25 in purple and orange out there. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> not the other 25 well he wears number 10 now for the brooklyn nets so uh but no man uh i i have a lot to say and uh i i don't see much that's wrong with this so we'll dive into that though in the next segment i want to get your thoughts man and give the people an opportunity to hear you your pros of possibly acquiring kevin durant well i think the biggest pro is right now you look at joel and bead and you look at his championship window and you say to yourself it has to happen this year or next year right you say that and when you have a guy like Kevin Durant, you know, uh, if you pick up him, then all of a sudden, right now, I look at the Sixers, they're in tier two of teams who can win a championship coming out of the East. Well, tier two overall. Tier one to me is the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Golden State Warriors, and maybe the Phoenix Suns, right? But if you put the, the if you get Kevin Durant, then all of a sudden the Sixers are up there in that tier and they're bumping one of those teams out in my opinion, right? You look at Kevin Durant, you you, you look and you can see what, what, what will happen. Um, a guy like a James Harden, you take the pressure off of him. He doesn't have to be that lethal scorer, right, that, that you expect him to do. He can be more of a facilitator. You know, Kevin Durant is a member of the 75th anniversary team. He's a four-time scoring champion, a 12-time All-Star, a 10-time All-NBA selection, and as a two-time um, NBA champion, he knows what it takes to win. So when you have him in there with Joel Embiid, James Harden, and then you have P.J. Tucker doing the dirty work, and if you just get a shooter, yes, this team is built for a championship on paper. I don't think that on paper you have three teams that have three Hall of future Hall of Famers on there that the Sixers have and MB and Harden and, and Kevin Durant. So to me, that's the pro. Yeah, he they, he would definitely put them in that top tier of competing for a championship uh, already in among the conversations with these other teams uh, to possibly do that. But right now you just put them in another level uh, if he joins this basketball team. Yes, he is uh, in his uh, you know early 30s, right around 33. And sure, we can talk about the decline and all of that stuff in this game, but once again, you take a lot of pressure off of each other where you just simply don't have to do it all on your own. And having dealt with everything that he has now dealt with, with Kyrie Irving and even James Harden dealing with his injury for a time there, but James Harden did try, uh, this would be a, a really good spot for him and for them as they all 
go on that quest to try to win. Stylistically, I don't think we really have to worry about it right now until it actually happens of what they would do on the floor. But it, it, it will make things easy. They can take turns. The offense might have to change a little bit, but not much because we know everything runs through Joel Embiid anyway. And after that, the ball just has to start snapping from the others, from Harden to Durant to Tucker and who, whomever else is that fifth starter out there on the floor with them. But offensively, we know who he is. Defensively, he can be a help to P.J. Tucker and Joel Embiid to form a strong defensive front line. Yes, I know P.J. Tucker is 37, but if you've heard of me talk about it in the past, I'm not worried about that right now until I actually see the decline where he can't do it anymore. But Kevin Durant, as a second perimeter defender, as a player that we, we've seen also play at a very high level on that end of the floor, this helps out in a, in a big, big way with this basketball team. So I'm all for it. You have the, in my opinion, when we talk about Tobias Harris, so you know we talk about him and we give him his props of being a professional scorer. When we talk about the professional scorer in all caps, that's Kevin Durant. He can get you that bucket. And he's that one when things get a little bogged down, whether it's at the end of a shot clock, end of a quarter, end of a half, end of game, you know you can put the ball in his hands and he can find himself anywhere, his spot on the floor to get himself a shot and potentially help you win that game, hit that shot in general to go into halftime, whatever it may be. That's the type of player we know Kevin Durant to be. We've seen it for many years. He has won championships and we know that he can get it done and he would be playing with the best center that he has ever played with in the NBA potentially if the deal does in fact go down. So I'm all for it. I see plenty of pros here and I'm sure all of you do as listeners and as viewers. Uh, we always love to hear from you on Twitter to let you let let us know what you think about this particular player if this does go down. Now, the cons, there are some. There are always pros and cons to these things. What are the cons? We'll talk to Keith about that on the other side right here, Locked On 76ers. Right now, let's talk about Bet Online. You see, you know, Bet Online is the number one sports thing for all your wagering and all this other things you want to do. It's also the fastest and easiest way to check on all your bet, bet, betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lives, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to the Bet Online today or use your mobile device and learn more about action happening there. Bet Online, where the game starts. I'm telling you, as D says, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Got to do it today. There's no need to do it tomorrow. Do it today. <laughs> Yeah, but you could do it tomorrow if, if that's where, where you are. But thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. For nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts, it's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, the pros we talked about in the first segment, and later on we'll also get into these videos that continue to surface James Harden working out in Los Angeles against other professionals in the league and uh, dissect some of that a little bit and see if we're taking it too seriously or, or not. But we'll get into that in the final segment. But here, let's talk about the cons of, of a potential deal with Kevin Durant joining the Philadelphia 76ers. You want to go first or you need me to do this one first? I mean, I could go first. I mean, okay. it doesn't matter. So here's the thing. Like, this is a high risk, high reward, right? I mean, you know, or because, you know, you look at it and and – you know, I'm a little leery about this. Now, again, I think if you is a trade that you have to make, but at the same time, you got to be careful about this. Oh, I shouldn't say you have to make, but it's something that you have to really look into. Um, all the things that we said before about what Kevin Durant brings, the scary part is that Kevin Durant has missed. Uh, he's only played in 90 games over the last three seasons. He played, he missed the entire uh, 2000 um, what was it? The, the the bubble season. He missed the entire 2019-20 season because of an Achilles injury. In 2020-21, he only played in 35 games. And that season was cut 
to 72 games because of COVID, but he only played in 35 games due to injury. And then last season, he played in 55 of 82 games because of injury, right? Right now, Kevin Durant is 33. He'll be 34 on September the 29th, right? So he's older. So the deal is, is when you look at it and you look at the injury history, he missed a lot of games, a lot of games. So you look at the injury history and you say to yourself, okay, if I got to trade him, right, I'm going to have to give up Tobias. I'm going to have to give up Matisse. And I'm also going to have to give up Maxi. Now, when you look at it, you say to yourself, you'll do that every day all day for a future Hall of Famer. But if this guy has an injury history and he should happen to get hurt this season and, and, and plays like, you know, do like he did the last one, then you're saying to yourself, wow, he's a great player, but he's not going to do me any good if he's missing games. So to me, that's the concern right there. That's the con. Because then you look at it and you say, okay, look at James Harden. If James Harden lost a step, but KD's not there to help him bail him out, and I don't have Maxi, that's the one con that I have about making this trade. So, again, it's high risk, high reward. But you got to be 100% sure because if this guy is injured. so And then you can also say, look at the Brooklyn Nets. As good as they were on paper, they've only got out of the they they never got out of the second round. So to me, right then and there, you got to be a hundred percent sure if you make this because it could also blow up in your face. Well, injury is a part of the game. I mean, Joel Embiid injury. They don't advance past the second round against the Miami Heat uh, because of the injury potentially to his face and his and his thumb injury possibly for James Harden as well. Uh, as part of the reason why they did not advance. Not the only reason, part of the reason why they did not advance. So as I look at it, you're absolutely right as far as the injury goes. That can happen to anyone. And that's where it leads me to the depth. That's where it breaks you down a little bit. It's the depth of having Harris, Thibel, Maxi having to go. And you possibly have to throw in another body uh, to have that play itself out too. Uh, if they're going to ask for someone else, who knows, maybe one of the young big men they may ask for plus some picks and all. So you're left now with Tucker, Harden, Embiid, and Durant. And who's your other starter? Is it going to be De'Anthony Melton? I don't think he's a starter. I think he's placed right where he should be in this role as a backup point guard. Is it going to be Daniel House? I don't think that should be the case there either. But, I mean, look, you can plug and play a lot of people. But I do think that what right now with this basketball team, before any trade for Kevin Durant, your starting five is solidified. And then you have a pretty good depth thing going on there that we've talked about extensively since everything has uh, been put together this offseason from Melton House, uh, having George Niang, Matisse Thibel, and then go to the two young big men, Isaiah Joe, also there, Shake Milton, Furkan Korkmaz. Whether you like them or not, you bump them down, yes, but that's because you have a pretty good number of players in front of them. So that's your depth. So that is where it will probably be my con for for this one is how your depth is going to be you're not going to get anyone back from the brooklyn nets although i would ask for someone like seth curry (laughs) or patty mills to come back in that deal and then all that money and all will work itself out but that's that would be my only con here my only issue with this thing because injuries happen it's the depth that you have put together that you are now breaking into to go out there and get Kevin Durant. Should that hold me up? Absolutely not. Because if I'm going to make that deal, if I'm Daryl Morey, Elton Brand, in that front office, my job is to make sure that the rest of the roster is put together enough that if I make a move like this, where we can still compete for the championship like we believe. Not everybody's going to have that super, super t- 10, 12 man depth there on their roster. That's the only con for me is the depth and breaking it up for this team. That's it. That's it. So uh, that's it for me. And that's it for Keith. On the other side, we'll talk about these videos that continue to surface from summer workouts in Los Angeles 
with the professionals out there at UCLA, James Harden. That's the only one we care about. We'll get into that next right here, Locked On 76ers. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. Keith Pompey, Devon Givens here, breaking down Kevin Durant, possibilities, pros and cons of a deal to Philadelphia. We did that in the first two segments. Now we have to talk about James Harden, his former teammate, possibly his future teammate again. This is all weird. Uh, Keith, the workouts go on and they continue to happen. And we see all the videos out there in Los Angeles from uh, Danilo Blanton on the floor, Pascal Siakam on the floor, uh, some of the other younger players that we see out there playing in UCLA, but most notably James Harden and Scotty Barnes. <laughs> Scotty Barnes, the latest being that he locking up James Harden and, and making him really work out there at these open runs in Los Angeles for the pros. Uh, I think it's Rico Hines' run, so run by Rico Hines. Uh, what do you make of it? Is it too making too much of it when he plays well? Is it making too much of it when Scotty Barnes is uh, locking him up on a 20-second clip? You know what? Is I would like to see – I mean, the, the, what we saw was real on that video. I mean, like, it, the video does, doesn't lie. But, however, I would love to see the whole run. You know what I mean? Like, I would love to – because – it was crazy because the day before, I mean, you know, you go back and you see stuff and you got somebody um, saying how you got somebody saying how James was was destroying him. Right. A guy went there and he tweeted and he said how James was destroying him. And then the next day you see this video. So to me, it's hard when you look at it. And you say, how can I how can I accurate accurately say what happened? If I got one guy saying one thing and then I got a video saying the exact I saying the exact opposite next day, but you know that this is only a 15 second video. I want to see what it was like the whole game. Now, but when you look at that, it it it, it is concerning if that's all you had, right? Because if that's all we had, because the reason being is you look at James, and yes, James lost a lot of weight. James is getting in shape. But at the same time, this is a video of a 33-year-old about to turn 34, right? Um, no, 32-year-old about to turn 33 going up against a 21-year-old. And at one play, it looked like he couldn't get his shot off. He threw up some crazy BS, and that was it. The second time you see him, he drives the lane. He doesn't get any elevation. And my man pins his shot at the bottom of the backboard, right? But again, so if that's all we had, we would be alarmed. But however, this is for over an hour and you're hearing that some other things. So really, it's hard to base it off of that just because of it was a small snippet and no one showed him. Now, again, we did see some videos of James cooking and baking the other role player type of guys. But this was the first time that he went up against an elite defender. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, yes, it looked bad, but at the same time, we didn't get the full body of work in regards to what he did to this guy over two days. Uh, doesn't do much for me, good or bad, uh, when Harden is going off and when Harden is being stopped. He's not going to score in every play. And when you have a defender like Scotty Barnes, who in the future is going to be one of these players that we look at, is probably going to be on the all defensive team for many, many years consecutively because that's how good he is. Harden is going to face a guy like that a lot. And then on the other side, he's not going to face that guy. Then they're going to devise things to set screens and run things to get him off of him. This strategy of doing something like that. Yes. It's concerning at times when you see something like that and the guys are simply shutting them down. As you said, you're talking about a 20-year-old going up against a 32-year-old, and this 20-year-old has the elite intangibles as a defensive player to be one of the best in the league going forward. So, yeah, it's something that you look at, but it also is doing this too, Keith. It's making him work. It's testing him to figure out and see what he has to do because he's going to sit down in the quiet moment in his home and say, Man, Scotty Barnes is really digging in me, and I can't, you know, I can't do anything about it. I need to figure out something else. What's my counter here? What do I do? And trying to figure this out. And that's what he has to do 
uh, to do that. So as we talk about just simply adjusting to not being able to do the stuff on the floor in the moment, you also hope that he's adjusting mentally and trying to figure out what he has to do next in order to be successful against a, a defensive player with that type of acumen uh, across from him. So i uh, not worried. It's good that he's facing it right now because he is going to face it during the regular season and most importantly in the playoffs. And he's going to face it against that Toronto Raptors team who we, we have to see four times a year come into Philadelphia twice. They go to Toronto, Scotiabank Arena twice, and they're going to face them and see how he adjusts to it and how he's able to beat that type of defense out there on the floor. So um, I, I just love it. I love watching it as an observer of basketball and see how they figure this stuff out. We see, we've seen many more positive plays from James Harden than yeah, this. Yeah, but you know what? Here's the thing, D. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be – I mean, I understand what we're saying, but if 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 that if Scotty Barnes was locking him up like that every time they played in other league guys, you got to be concerned. Well, now, we don't I mean, know. Like you said, yeah. yeah, we don't know, but oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but if he was, that. we don't know, but because I don't think if if that's what we saw, he ain't he might not be able to get that back. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like he when you're 33 and the dude's 21, it's kind of hard to get it back. But again, like we said, like I got to see the full thing, but like you know, but that's something to pay attention to. Like you said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When we get there, I mean, I don't, I personally don't care about summer videos. So when we see all these things that he's doing that that are positive, I don't care about those either. I, I just don't because I don't need to see the videos. I'm sure he's working. I know he's working. It was the same thing with Simmons when he was here and we kept getting those videos all the time. I didn't care uh, if they released videos or not. I preferred mm-hmm. that they didn't. So to me, I, I don't care. But since we see it, it's out there and, and we have to talk about it. Sure. You, you want to see more positive videos, but that's almost impossible when you're going against other pros. They're going to have good moments against you too. Mm-hmm. So that, that's why I'm saying I, I don't worry about it. Everybody's going to get the, the get the best of that pl- that player in these runs. Somebody's going to have a good day. Keith, there's been plenty of times you simply have a you have a bad day playing pickup basketball, and you have a phenomenal day picking up pickup bas- playing pickup basketball where nobody can stop you, not even the best of the best. And then they might switch them on you because guess what? You cooking everybody. So it's like, hey, can you go out there and slow them down a little bit? Yeah, I'll give it my best shot. So, hey, it's it's great that it's out there and we have access to this stuff when they put it out there. I'm all about the regular season when it pops up. And, and again, most importantly, the, uh, the, the, the postseason when it's time for the playoffs. But I get it. People love the videos and they keep that's why they keep putting them out there. So we can all see him. But Keith, man, as always, man, this is fun. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about a little bit more of the 76ers going forward. But we got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On uh, Locked On NBA, where Locked On experts are covering the biggest stories around the league every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, let people know where they can uh, follow us and maybe comment on this fine podcast, if you will. Yeah, they, they disagree with D if you like. Always, <laughs> always, always. Just messing, but like just messing. You can get this podcast, like D said, wherever you wherever you get this lock, you know, locked on NBA podcast. You can also get the locked on 76ers podcast, right? Wherever you subscribe to it. But if you want to get this specific podcast, the Locked On 76ers YouTube channel, go to YouTube. Do Locked On 76ers YouTube channel. Search that. And when you get in on into the podcast, click on to the Liberty Bell. When you do that, you become a subscriber. Now, right now, we're both on vacay, but the D is about to go off. Um, it'll be back next week. But you can listen to my man on 97.5 from the uh, Divine Giving Show from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., Mondays through Fridays. You can also follow him on Twitter at DivineG975. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompeii on Sixers. You can also follow me on Instagram, IG, at Pompeii on Sixers. But I'm on vacay until September the 13th. But you can make sure that you go to Inquire.com and read our 76ers coverage, right? Um, and like I said, you can follow both of us. D, you on IG? I am. Um, Devon.Gibbons. All right. On, on Instagram. Yep. So make sure you do that. But again, we don't follow each other. 
I mean, I I just be doing drive-bys, but yeah, I, I think we'll find out. We we gonna start today. I'm bad on there, man. My kids are always telling me, Dad, you got to do more on that. Yeah, All I right. gotta do more too. I gotta do more too. But what I'm telling y'all, make sure y'all come here, get the Locked On 76ers podcast this summer. But also next week, do yourself a favor from six to ten, six to ten, ninety-seven five, and make sure you uh, pick up. The inquire.com. Go to inquire.com. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. You might as well. If you guys are not doing anything else, it's hot outside. You're staying inside. So you might as well check us out. Keith, thanks, man. As <laughs> always, go follow me on Instagram, Keith. I'll do it today, people. I'm going to do it today. <laughs> All right. All right, man. All right. Peace.